All right, so this should technically be part 22, I think. But I don't think I'm going to call it part 22. There's not going to be any like building or assembly here. I just want to talk about paint. I realized that in all of these parts, I haven't really shown any painting. I mean, I've shown end results, uh, but I've never actually talked about or shown painting. A couple of reasons why, I think. Um, for one, painting is kind of my weak area. Um, and, uh, and also, I mean, it takes me, it takes me a while to get the same good result as somebody who's like really, really good at it. Um, cause I end up having to like sand it down, repaint, sand it down, repaint. I'll explain that better here in a minute. And also I don't really have a good way to film myself painting. It kind of sounds stupid as I say it out loud, but, uh, I mean, I have to like step outside into the driveway to paint. Uh, I, I can't paint indoors and I don't really right now have a good setup for the camera to, I mean, anyways, I, I guess I could probably figure something out. That's probably just me being uh, lazy, but anyways, I think the primary reason is it's just not my strong point. And, um, and plus there's so many videos on YouTube about painting and people showing how to paint people who paint way better than me. So you should probably watch them. Um, but I just wanted to take some time to talk about what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, um, where I'm at now, why it's taking so long for the paint. Uh, first off, uh, I use just a normal, um, well, after I sand the body down, once it's ready for paint, I'll use just a normal, uh, like an automotive rattle can uh, filler primer. And the filler primer uh, that'll fill in any like scratch marks from sanding or uh, or anything like that and I lay that on fairly heavy I put a couple of good coats of that on and then I sand it down until I can just start to see the plastic coming through uh, for example uh, these are the hood panels and <clears throat> excuse me so you can see like the black lines here that's where I had sanded and uh, then primered and then I'm sanding down and I'm sanding down until I just get kind of to the plastic again and this will get another coat of primer and actually what happened was um, that uh, the black lines are that's actually paint because what happened was I had it primered and I sanded it to what I thought was smooth enough and then when I put the black paint on it then I could see all the scratches that I didn't get sanded out completely so I sanded it back down and uh, now I'm ready for more to reprime this. Uh, but typically, uh, typically, like I said, uh, this is a better example over here, where I'll sand the primer down until I can just start seeing the, uh, the under the plastic, that red is like a filler putty, because I really did a lot of body work in here um, to get that to the correct curve. So I just sand it until I can just start seeing the plastic underneath until the primer is like really, really smooth. And I'll take that to like, you know, at least 1,000 grit, probably 1,200 or 1,500 grit until the primer is really smooth. And then I'll put the uh, color coat on top of that. And when I put the color coat on, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, there's, I, I've heard several times that uh, you're supposed to do several light layers. Several light layers is better than one thick layer. So... I'm using this airbrush. I've had this airbrush for years. It's an Iwata and um, suction fed, just uses a bottle, you know, hanging off the bottom this way. This is a double action. So you press it down to get the airflow and then pull it back. And the further you pull it back, the more paint comes out. And so what I'll do is I'll be, you know, I'll stay maybe like about that far away or so. And I'll start off of the model and then apply the, and then I'll start getting the paint flow and then I'll go across the model this way and I'll go off till I'm off the edge. Uh, it's not a good idea to start when you're over the model. It's not a good idea to stop when you're over the model. You wanna go completely across, make very purposeful um, actions across. As far as how far away you are and how fast and how slow you go, that's just gonna come with, with uh, practice, experimenting. You want to go at a speed and it's kind of a balancing act if you go too slow right if you go too slow 
then the paint will will puddle up too fast or too too thick and it'll just kind of run off and it'll get all screwed up uh, if you go too fast you won't get good coverage also if you're too close it'll just blast on and you'll it'll just get all screwed up if you're too far away then the paint will look more kind of like speckled um, so I typically start about you know three or four inches away somewhere around there and I'll start lightly and as I need to I'll apply more paint and I kind of adjust as I'm going I kind of look at what the paints doing and I'll speed up or slow down as I'm going give more or less um, paint through here as I'm going and that, a lot of that depends on how thin you mix the paint because I always put thinner uh, by the way I'm always using um, Model Masters enamel this is the gloss black you've got to thin it with um, I just use this universal enamel thinner and um, and again if you mix it thinner one time and thicker another time then that will affect your movement and I highly recommend that um, before you start a big expensive model that you get a cheap model kit even if you find it at a thrift shop or Goodwill or something like that that you really don't care about and just practice on that body of that and that way if you screw it up you know no, no big deal or even just uh, you know just get a piece of PVC pipe or something just just anything you can practice on so you can get a feel for the gun you get a feel for how close how far away how fast how slow to move also as you're spraying across as it goes on wet the edge like if it's spraying on like here the edge will look a little cloudy you want to overlap um, so one pass you want to overlap the other pass maybe a fourth give or take and you can actually trace that that foggy edge all the way past if you don't overlap enough you could get what's called zebra striping so you'll get an area of shiny and then dull shiny dull and that's you know if you're going too slow or if you're not overlapping enough and as far as how heavy to put it on again it's a balancing act you want it on thick enough so that it looks wet okay thick enough so that it looks wet but not so thick that it actually starts to run and you can see here so it's kind of shiny right here uh, I haven't wet sanded I haven't touched that at all same here I haven't touched that at all because that's where the um, the fabric canopy part goes so that'll never be seen so I don't really need to focus on that and once you get those coats on and again I typically do about four or five coats of the color I'll put one coat on let it set for about three or four or five minutes then I'll put another coat on also with big surface like this one pass goes this way the next coat goes this way that'll also help reduce the um, zebra striking or striping tiger striping whatever you want to call it and once you got the four or five coats on let it fully cure now I have said a few times in some of my other videos that I, I don't touch it for a week I'll let it cure for a week and I've said a few times that I, I painted a model one time and after three days I picked it up and I left a, a print a, a fingerprint in the paint because it wasn't fully cured ever since that happened I just made it a, a, a rule I don't touch it for a week I spray it and I let it set for a week well what happened on this as I was wet sanding and you just want to wet sand enough until it's smooth and even it feels smooth and the surface finish is is even and smooth how many times have I said smooth what happened as I was wet sanding along here apparently I didn't get enough coverage around here the first time and it just started to come through the primer once it happens you've got to respray that area now I purposefully use a gray primer when I'm painting black uh, you can get black primers but with a gray primer it doesn't let you get away with your mistakes if I had black primer it would have been a lot harder to notice that I went through the paint and into the primer and then when I put the clear coat on you might have seen that because the shade of black from the primer not might might not have matched the shade of black from the gloss black and when I put the clear on it probably would have been noticeable so by using a lighter color a little piece of dust in there by using a lighter color of um, or a different color of primer in this case gray as soon as I start to sand through I could see it right away and and it's kind of a bummer it sucks but at least you see it you know you need to fix it 
So I touched up this area once, that's already been wet sanded back down and that, that side is good. That little bit you see there is just a reflection, that's not the primer. So this side is, this is all ready for clear. This area here, this top area here, I had to redo a couple of times because as I'm wet sanding it, it went through to the primer. And so I put a couple of coats on, I went to wet sand it again, and it went through the primer right at the point, right at the tip here. So I, I, I sprayed it again, so I, I'm ready to wet sand this. Now as far as waiting a week, I finally decided to do something I should have done years ago, and I just sprayed a sample card. This is just a piece of styrene. When I sprayed this, I sprayed this, and this was yesterday. And I can, I can handle that pretty well. I'm squeezing it pretty tightly, and I am leaving fingerprints. But if I try scratching it, it's not scratching, it's not coming off, it's, it's not sticky, but it will very slightly leave a mark. It is not fully cured. But I did try a little bit of wet sanding. I'm using the sanding sponges. This is Thousand Grit. Uh, this is good. Uh, in, in my opinion, this is good for your base color to get it ready for your clear coat. Now the clear coat, you want to like maybe start with a thousand, but then go to 1500, then 2000. Uh, everybody has their preferences. I'll go as fine as I can go, and then I'll do like a paint polishing compound, like an automotive paint compound than a wax. But to wet sand it, I just, I just have a little bucket of water over here, a little bowl of water. So I dip that in water and just very, very gently, um, just start, uh, just start sanding that. And I'm not pressing down hard, I'm just kind of letting the weight of it do the work. And as the grit of the sandpaper bites in, you can feel, you can kind of feel when the paint, as the paint gets smoother, All right? And I'm wet sanding that, and it's actually working out pretty well. Let me just kind of dry that off. It's not screwing the paint up. Um, I don't know how well it's gonna show, but, um, it's actually wet sanding okay. I mean, it's even after only drying overnight, I'm able to wet sand it. Um, now, again, I wouldn't hold it or handle it on, on the model with my fingers because, again, it's still soft enough I can leave little dents. But if you're gentle, um, if you're gentle, you can, you can still wet sand that and then get it ready for clear coat. So. Yeah, I should have done this. I should have just tested this years ago just to see how long I have to wait before I can actually wet sand it. So I could, um, I'm gonna wait till tonight just to let it cure for several more, for more hours. But tonight before I go to bed, I'm going to wet sand here and then tomorrow I'll do the clear coat. And um, yeah, and, and today, today is like stupid hot. It's like, um, it's probably way too hot and humid to be painting anyways. Tomorrow's supposed to be nicer. Tomorrow's supposed to be in the 80s. So tomorrow will be a nicer day to paint. So again, I'll just let it cure for a few more hours and, um, and then I'll clear coat it tomorrow. So instead of waiting for an entire week, like what I used to do. So if you have the time to wait, it's definitely better. The longer you can let it sit, the harder it's gonna cure. Uh, the better it's going to wet sand, I think. Um, I'm kind of just making stuff up at this point. But uh, I, I really, I kind of need to get this done so I can get, you know, so I can get stuff on it. Now, when you are doing the primer, when you're sanding the primer, uh, I screwed up a couple places. Let me grab the fenders. Let me get rid of this. Uh, let me grab the fenders real quick. So on the fenders, I had a similar issue where when I was sanding the primer, I didn't sand down in here very well. So the primer was uh, kind of had a, a sandpaper texture. And I didn't notice that until I painted the black on. Then I went to wet sand that down, trying to get the black smooth, I went through the primer. So I had to redo around here, all around this area here, I had to redo that a few times. Also, when you are sanding, be very careful with edges like this. Um, that there's a sharp edge, it goes all along here. Paint does not really build up on a sharp edge like that very well. And down here, I accidentally went across the sharp edge and took it down to the primer. So I had to reapply along here. Um, I had to reapply all around and in here because um, 
yeah, I started sanding through the primer. So again, when you're sanding, be very careful with sharp edges. Don't run the sandpaper over the sharp edge. It'll take it down to the primer like real quick. And um, and again, just just take your time. Be purposeful with the uh, with your motions. Uh, be very aware and careful of of edges and corners. Don't press down hard. Just kind of let the weight of the paper do the work. Constantly dip it back into the water. The water washes away the dust as you're sanding. It helps keep the sandpaper from clogging, um, and it just uh, it just makes for a better surface. So again, I'm going to finish wet sanding this down tonight. I'll get the clear coat on it tomorrow, and then after the clear coat, wet sand, um, polish, buff, and then wax. And then I should be able to start finishing the body, putting the body onto the chassis. I, I was re-watching the video I just posted recently and I kept calling the chassis the body. Hopefully uh, you guys knew what I meant. Also I was... Okay, I just cut myself off and interrupted myself because the last three or four minutes from there I was just rambling on about stuff. Um, so I did forget to mention one thing. You'll notice I'm working on paper towels here paper towels like this. I need to stop doing that. Um, I, I use these for like everything. The problem with these is it makes dust. Uh, you tear them. Um, it just makes little fine little lint and dust and you'll see little tiny fibers. Um, you'll see that on your model even before you start painting. Before you actually start applying the paint, before you pull that back to apply paint, push it down to get the air going and just use the air to blow the dust off the model and then start painting. But these paper towels are the worst you can use. One major problem I have with painting is I get, I get little specks in the paint and you have to sand that down and repaint over that. And um, if the speck goes on in the first layer, you gotta sand all the way down to that or, or you'll see it, it'll show up. Um, so that's a major pain in the rear. Um, I have enough problems with dust because like I said, I have to paint outside, but 99% of my dust problems are because of these paper towels. So one thing I need to do is stop using these. You can get lint-free paper towels, they're available. Uh, so I just have to find and use lint-free paper towels. Um, I also use these little tack cloths. You can get these at like Pet Boys or any automotive store. It's like a cheesecloth that has like a, like a wax in it and you can just use that to get rid of any dust. I've heard that you're not supposed to use this because if you press too hard, you'll actually get that wax residue on your model. If you're just barely rubbing it, I mean, just, just let the weight of that go over, it'll pick up the dust and it won't transfer any wax to it. So if you use this, uh, just be careful with it. And if you're using these normal types of kitchen paper towels, then stop. Um, like I'm, I'm gonna try to look for the right stuff. Um, but anyways, now I'm gonna stop rambling. I'm gonna be done. And as always, thanks for watching.